All right, well, this is a very important reaction, so let's stop and talk about it. Now, notice that we were following this general pattern, but you can see the general pattern doesn't cover every case precisely because it leaves out any protonations or deprotonations. This is the general pattern leaving out the protonations or deprotonations. The hard part is figuring out when you need a protonation or deprotonation. Now, did this reaction require a catalyst? No. No, because we were at the top of the chart here, so I didn't put in any catalyst. So there was no initial protonations or deprotonations. Now, again, this was the picture where we were most likely to get confused. Um, some people here might shift the proton. So at this point, it, might, it would be nice if we could find a good way to deprotonate here. You might try to deprotonate here, but there's no logical person to put the proton on. A lot of people, I think, would shift the proton over here, but that doesn't help us to reform the carbonyl, so you wouldn't want to do that. And here's where the asterisk helps us. And it doesn't make sense to add the proton over here, because you never see a chlorine with a proton. That would give it two bonds here. Um, this is already a good leaving group. It doesn't need a proton. So in this case, this had to wait until the last step for it deprotonated. We'll, we'll see a, lo a lot of other examples where the, the nucleophile might shift a proton here. Sometimes the leaving group does need some help to leave, and then we could do a proton transfer at this point. But we didn't need that for the acyl halide. What type of functional group did we start with? Uh, acyl halide. Yeah, acyl chloride, good. And what type of functional group did we end up with? Uh, carboxylic acid. That's right. Now, do you remember what the name for this reaction is? Here, here we, we've treated an acid derivative with water to make a carboxylic acid. Do you remember what that was called from the other videos? What do we call it when we treat something with water? Hydrolysis. To, hydrolysis. This is a very important type of reaction. You're going to see lots and lots more hydrolysis for the rest of the course. And are we always going to get an, a, a, a carboxylic acid when we... Uh, have a hydrolysis? If you hydrolyze a carboxylic acid derivative, you will always get a carboxylic acid because that's the definition of a carboxylic acid derivative. The reason that these are all put in the same group is because they all hydrolyze to carboxylic acids. Now, there are other things you can hydrolyze that would not become carboxylic acids, but those are not considered carboxylic acid derivatives. Hydrolysis is a very important process. It means breaking with water. Hydrolysis means adding water to break a bigger molecule into pieces. Uh, if you ever go on to take biochemistry, this will keep coming up over and over because this is how the body can break down uh, larger molecules into smaller molecules. It can hydrolyze peptides to form amino acids or it can hydrolyze uh, polysaccharides to form monosaccharides. In fact, at the end of your course right here, you're actually going to cover some of that biochemistry So, because uh, you're going to be covering peptides and the carbohydrates even in your OCHEM class. So hydrolysis is going to keep coming up here. As we'll keep practicing our nomenclature, what is the actual name of this substance? Um, uh, acyl oil? Is it, what is it? it sounds funny, but... That's a decent start. Um, uh, acid oil halide. Is that what it is? Hey, like chloride here. Chloride. Yeah. The IUPAC name would be ethanol chloride. But you're more likely to see the common name. The only thing that was tricky there is in the common name we don't acetyl. use oil, we use oil. Acetyl chloride. This would be most commonly called acetyl chloride. Acetyl chloride. So unfortunately the common name has not only a different root but also a slightly different suffix. Okay. And what's the name of this carboxylic acid? Uh, a carboxylic acid? Yeah, which particular carboxylic acid is it? Uh, what would be the name of this particular acid? Ethanoic acid. Ethanoic acid, that's right. And the common name uh, Acidic acid? Yeah. I usually pronounce that acetic acid. I don't know if that's right. Again, the suffix is a little bit different too. It's an oic, it's just ic. So this is uh, almost never called ethanoic acid. In real life, it's called acetic acid. Incidentally, we should review why is the order of reactivity like this? Why are acyl halides the most reactive and these are the least reactive? Uh, in the videos, I gave two different sets of explanations for that. One set of explanations is based on uh, resonance. Some of these can donate electrons to the carbonyl to help stabilize the carbonyl. The nitrogen can donate electrons by resonance to help stabilize this carbonyl. 
Um, but uh, the oxygen is less willing to donate the electrons because it's more electronegative. And this oxygen is even less willing to donate electrons to the left because there's other resonance forms where it can donate it to the right. And halogens are the least willing to donate by resonance because uh, the halogens that we're dealing with are too big to form a good uh, resonance overlap. Usually we don't deal with fluorine here, we deal with like chlorine and bromine, and those are too big to really donate electrons effectively. Uh, but that is not the explanation that your instructor covered in their lecture notes. Your instructor covered a different explanation. Do, do you remember what the other reason is for the order of reactivity? I think I only talked about that very briefly in the um, uh, lectures. Um, who can uh, better stabilize a negative charge? When it leaves. When it leaves. Yeah, so who has the best leaving group? That's right. Well, which of these does have the best leaving group? Yeah, we know that halogens are good leaving groups. At least chlorine and bromine are. We're, we're really not going to see fluorines here. Chlorine and bromine and iodine are good leaving groups. That's right. Um, why would this oxygen be better able to stabilize a negative charge than this oxygen? Because of the resonance from That's right. the good. adjacent oxygen. This has resonance structures that help to stabilize the negative charge, and this doesn't. Good. And why would an oxygen be better able to stabilize a negative charge than a nitrogen? Okay, so that was the explanation for reactivity that your instructor talked about in the notes. Just based on leaving group ability. Good. That explains again why these reactions don't usually use cat mean catalyst. In this so case. say for instance on like the, uh, the acyl halide, if you have, if he gives for example uh, acyl, uh, like an acetyl uh, chloride and an acetyl bromide, then you would go by just your regular, what you know about electronegativity and the size of the atom, would that be how you would go? You're, asking, you're saying which of these would have the better leaving group? Yeah. Yeah, that would be a little tricky. I don't know if, do, do you know which of these is better leaving group? Uh, isn't the, uh, the bromide a better leaving group? And what's the reason for that? For its size. Good. Now, are these in the same column or the same row? Same column. So should we focus on their size or their electronegativity? Their size. Which is exactly what you were doing. Okay. You should focus on their size. Bromine is bigger. And does that make it better able to stabilize the charge? Uh, yeah. Yeah, because the bigger you are, the more places you can put the charge. Remember that a good way to stabilize a charge is to spread the charge out. So absolutely, this would be the better leaving group. So I would expect that this would be more reactive than this. That's a good analysis. I would expect that this would be more reactive, and it's good that you did not focus on electronegativity. If you'd focused on electronegativity, you would have gotten the opposite answer, which would be wrong. When things are in the same column, it's not the electronegativity that's most important, it's the size. Okay. Well, based on the size, we expect this to be the better leaving group. Okay. On the other hand, which of these is the better leaving group? The, uh, the oxygen. Right, and these are in the same row. Yeah. When things are in the same row, what do you need to focus on? Electronegativity. Right, now you focus on the electronegativity, but the oxygen can stabilize the negative charge better because of the electronegativity. So that oftentimes confuses students. They don't know when to focus on electronegativity and when to focus on size. Well, these are in the same row, so you focus on their electronegativity. And as you already worked out, these are in the same column, so you focus on their size. It turns out that usually electronegativity is less important when you're comparing things in the same column. In fact, it could give you the wrong answer. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. You might see a question where you're asked to say, rank the following compounds in order of reactivity. So you want to focus on leaving group ability. Let's go through the mechanism here. <clears throat> 